following podcast may contain spoilers, strong language, graphic violence, and nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. Rob, you didn't even paint me naked. Yes, I did. Four guys and a movie. Four guys and a movie. Don't I try and rob a show reviewing movies for the show. Four guys and a movie. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Four Guys in a Movie podcast, the podcast about movies by nerds for nerds and the Punisher riding on a pig. <laughs> I'm your host, Rob. Today, I'm joined by my friends. Will. It's okay. It's not like I pointed at you, Tony, to <laughs> you should. Thank you. <laughs> well, you pointed at me, but they started to say something, and Joe's usually before me. No, I'm, I'm, Tony, I'm always last. <laughs> Are you? I don't yeah, fucking yeah. remember. We haven't done this live in... So long, and it's been a while since the four of us have been in person. It's been a while. Tony, change your batteries. I wish I could. Oh, wait. why can't you? Get your robot spouse to put you back together. Change your kitchen. batteries. All right. Uh, sorry, listeners, but if you'll just give me a minute to go in the other room and put my dick in a light socket. <laughs> You're supposed to say batteries not oh. included. Does the title have an asterisk in it? Yes, yes it, does. Yes, it does. does. The whole movie has an asterisk. It's called... Snooze alarm. Called. We're gonna make this so you cannot put the proper title on any of your documents because we will not accept that as a proper. So, so, <laughs> so I'm Rob. This is Tony. Will is over there. Joe is here too. Hey yo. Hey guys. Hey. We're all back around a table. Not all of us, but almost. Well, hey, God, we the all of swear. the participants <laughs> in this podcast are around the same table, and Will is breaking everything. All the Rob's Legos. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, can I ask a question right in the beginning? Yes, of course. When this is a Steven Spielberg presents, mm-hmm. does that just mean like somebody told him this is what I want to do for a movie and he was like, yeah, it's a good idea. You should do that. Yeah. yeah. And that is basically his involvement. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like Transformers. Or yeah. Animaniacs. Be like, or Mortal Kombat. Freakazoid. Can, can I use things that yeah. might look kind of like some alien things you did, but like way shittier? Yeah, and we'll get like, into that in a moment. He just yeah. pulled. He just pulled a box out of his garage. He's like, "Yeah, just take whatever you want." Mm-hmm. Also, I'm starting to wonder where we land actually on this because we're talking about Steven Spielberg presents. You're naming all the good stuff. I'm naming the bad stuff. Listen, and I mean, you seem to have a different idea. What, of what other happened. bad stuff does he have? I'm just saying, he he's here in name only because right, yeah. Even Spielberg on his bad day tries harder than what we got here. Yeah, this was a... Uh... We are putting the cart before the horse yeah. here, though. I Again, I, I found one... I found very little on this movie, but what little mm. I found might explain all of it. Ooh. All right. What a tease. Tony, yeah. have you ever seen Batteries Not Included? And if so, what'd you think of it? I did. I thought I liked it. <laughs> I, I now remember I really like those little alien robots, and that's all I remember about any of it. Okay. Well, have you ever seen Batteries Not Included? And if so, what did you think of it? <laughs> I think this is the first time I've actually seen it all the way through. I vaguely remember seeing clips on or tuning in at different points on like Disney Channel or something like that growing up. Because uh, as we were watching it, different things, I remembered like the dad robot getting hurt and being really sad about that. And I don't think I really had any thoughts about it before today. Um, yeah. I believe earlier you said you confused it with the robot from Flubber. <laughs> Yes, it's 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 called Weeblo or something like that. Weeblo. Uh, wow. Joe, have you ever seen that? <laughs> what did you think of it? So, if I'm remembering correctly, I I saw this, you know, in the '80s when I was a wee one, and remembered that the robots were cute. Mm-hmm. Then, in like my mid to late '20s, when I um, there was a girl I was living with who this was on, and I forced her to watch it. I'm like, no, these robots are cute. <laughs> I remember. And then I think we made it maybe 15 minutes, and we're like, I'm sorry, the I made you watch robots. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then turned it off, and that was all I've ever seen of batteries not included. Okay. So my memory tells me that I've seen this multiple times, and that I... Multiple times? I don't know. That's what my memory says, but it could be lying to me. My memory lies about a lot of things, because I am I am fey. Um, but I remembered this being like one of those generic feel good movies mm-hmm. you thought <laughs> i thought uh and uh yeah that's you don't you know what's a, a bad sign is that if someone was like hey battery's not included 
did you like it? And you'd probably be like, yeah, you know, I remember liking it. And, they're like, and then they're like, what happened in the movie? And they're just like, uh. I thought there was cute uh, robots. Yeah, honestly, because that's the thing. I was like, I, this might not be, or I don't really remember. Because if you asked me, if you put a gun to my head and told me to tell you what happened, I would say an adorable little robot got some cheese on his head and put, got put in a bun. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, that is it. Right. That's the the, the thing you saw every a, time the commercial played on USA. Yeah, or that's whatever. about all I remember. I would yell, "Robots porking!" <laughs> and then punch him in the nuts. Yeah, yeah. I totally forgot that. Also, he told me that this was like some kind of Tennessee William play about some dramatic ass <laughs> shit going on in the yeah. New York apartment. Mm -hmm. Don't remember any of some that. Some sort of dementia story. Yeah, like some... I fucking thought Donna Michi was in this. <laughs> Some lady with Alzheimer's thinks Raul Julia is her son. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Marlon Brando's outside yelling, Flop some! <laughs> Chip some! <laughs> <laughs> Tony. Yeah, so obviously we watched Batteries Not Included from 1987, rated PG, uh, directed by Matthew Robbins. Uh, Matthew he, Broderick. <laughs> Wait, was it? Who's, what else has Monty Robbins done? Uh, he's done a whole bunch of stuff you guys are going to be really excited about. I can't wait. <laughs> like Corvette Summer and Bingo. Wow. <laughs> Though he did do The Legend of Billie Jean and Dragon Slayer. Huh. Really? Yeah. So I don't know what to make of that. Also, that's is, that's not just the only credits I'm reading. That's pretty much the only credits he has. Is Bingo the one with the golden retriever? With the, um, I think the kid's dad is the kicker for the Green Bay Packers, and they kidnap him to try to get him to shank a field goal. I think And the so. dog has to save him. Wow, I thought it was going to be mean, another movie about old people playing bingo. Yeah, that's another one where, <laughs> gun to my head, if you asked me yeah. what that movie was about, I would have told you there's a dog that wears sunglasses on the cover. Yeah, I remember <laughs> seeing that. I remember seeing that in Blockbuster. In fairness, if you look that up on IMDb, that's probably the synopsis yes. for the movie. And uh, does anybody here actually remember? Outside of a cool uh, stop-motion dragon, what does anybody remember about Dragon Slayer? And that's not the Sean Connery one? Nope. And I think Peter McNichol the... swimming. Yeah, I was just going to say, the guy from Ghostbusters 2 fights a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, honestly, nothing besides a dragon that was cool looking at the time. Yeah, all right. Can I read the tagline for Bingo? Please do. <laughs> thrown, thrown out of the circus, separated from his only friend, accused of a crime he didn't commit. <laughs> this shouldn't happen to a dog, but it did. And it's still the dog wearing sunglasses. <laughs> yes. Yes. Pull the pie off the windowsill. <laughs> I swear that dog stole that pie. Nah, he was accused of murder. Yes, he is. So, yes, I hope he does, and I hope he burns in hell. <laughs> so here's some weird things about this movie. Okay. Uh, this is a little fun thing, which is some of the beginning shots, which, as we mentioned, were clearly faked. Um, but the, in actuality, the shots of the couple together were real, because they are a real couple in real life. Um, this Wait, what? Shots I thought for a hot yeah. second that what Tony said was so profound that it caused you to do a spit take. <laughs> yeah. So, One day. so you're saying... No, uh, Rob doesn't listen to me. Uh, Jessica Tandy and uh, the other old guy. Are Hume in... Cron? Cron? Oh, Hume, Hume, Hume Cronin? Cronin? David yeah. Cronenberg. Yeah. Yeah. David Cronin. <laughs> they're they're uh, married in real life? Is yes. that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, they were. Well, I mean... Mysterious circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. Till death do us part. Yeah, they're no longer married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, neither one of us are. Anyway. They're, um, they're death divorce. No. Also, apparently, this was the feature film screenwriting debut of one Brad Bird. Really? That. Yeah. I can see that. I mean... I kind of can, It does but... kind of have Iron Giant vibes. Pixar vibes. No. Well, and, yeah, I guess if you were to go back to... What I wrote in high school wouldn't be that great either, so I don't know if you when I looked at what I write now, it's not that great either. Anyway, um I mean it's but, like it's like if Iron Giant was just Hogarth's mom at the diner all night and you never actually saw the giant. Crying about how Hogarth died? <laughs> yeah. But she had dementia. Huh. Right. And he the gets, beat and the beat he got guy. stepped on by the big robot. 
I kind of wish now she had to call that guy no girl. <laughs> this whole movie. <laughs> Alright, but this is the one little tidbit that makes all of this make way more sense, at least to me. And I think will for you as well. Uh, originally, the reason this is a Steven Spielberg Presents is originally this was pitched as an idea for Amazing Stories TV show, which he then decided for some reason to make into a full length movie. That make a lot of sense. Okay. Yep. That, Piece of stuff yeah. falling into place now, don't they? Yeah. Because yeah. this would totally be like a fine TV show episode. 40 minutes. It, and watching yeah. it, it felt like one. Now knowing mm -hmm. that and having that headspace, I'm like, oh yeah, I could totally mm -hmm. see this in Amazing Stories. Oh, okay. But instead, they just they, they threw stretched some it out. hooks in it and <laughs> threw it on that rack and stretched yeah. it out to an hour. <laughs> 37 minutes. A story has not been stretched out that much since The Hobbit. <laughs> so, do you want to guess at the budget this movie oh, had? God. That's a that's a damn good question. I don't really uh, care, but I'm going to say <laughs> like 15 million. You want to just end it there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Nobody cares. I don't care. I was going to say two, but I was Yeah, I, I care. I'll go with like eight. <laughs> oh. If it's more than all of that, I quit yeah <laughs> well good night everybody it was 25 million dollars oh, good yes. gravy jesus <laughs> yeah that hurt me to say oh. i want to guess how much it made no we got one no honestly you could make you could make this movie today on 25 million dollars i'm gonna say nobody saw it i'm gonna say nobody paid to see it in theaters they've only ever seen it on television Ugh. so i'm gonna, it, I'm gonna it, use my same guess 15 million yeah uh, 10 it wasn't a sequel I don't think it did well. Well, it's $65 million. Oh, that is Jesus pretty well. Christ. That's not bad. I mean, it made its money at least, so, you know, it wasn't a, I don't think that makes a huge hit necessarily, but. You know, what year is it? This is 87? Yes. All right, so that, that makes a little more sense. Spielberg, Spielberg added his another car 80s. onto his garage. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's pretty much all I got from us. Let's get into it. Yeah, so after 30 minutes of credits where we just get, like... Does anyone care who's in it? Uh, Jessica Tandy and a bunch of people you've never seen before? And we'll never see again. We want to just go with that. No, they're, well, no, the, um, they're in a lot of 80s stuff. Harry, the guy who plays yeah. Harry, isn't he like the commissioner that like yells at um, Arnold in uh, Last Action Hero? Or is that a different guy? Hmm. I don't know. If you had a go to my head, don't even tell you, <laughs> so you what Rock Section here was. Thing. I've seen all of those people in other things. No, yeah. The, but, I, but I could never at all tell you what those things are. Yeah, like I, the guy that plays the artist, I've seen him recently, and he's in Better Call Saul as like a oh, really? like a shitty lawyer. Is he? Oh, okay. um, but other than that, I couldn't yeah. have placed him for me. I guarantee you half this cast was at some point or another in an ABC sitcom. Yeah, for a hot second, I thought that um, the artist guy was the guy that got his hand uh, melted in the fly. Oh, yeah. He's very similar looking, but yeah. no. Okay, we'll do this real quick. You got Hume Cronin as Frank Riley, Jessica Tandy as Faye Riley, Frank McRae as Harry Noble, Elizabeth Pena as Marissa Estival, and um, I guess we don't even get to know who the artist is. Wow, he is low on this uh, cast list. All right, that's all you get. All right, cool. Wait, nice. who's Harry Noble then? Was that the, the boxer, right? Yeah, that was the boxer. The superintendent. Okay. Right. I don't. I don't barely remember them saying his name again. I don't yeah. remember any of this shit. Sorry, okay. he didn't. He didn't get any character development. Yeah, that I don't to remember. remember. Like I legit don't remember them saying anybody's name other than Faye, Frank, Carlos, and Bobby. <laughs> and Bobby, yeah, the deceased person. Uh, but yeah, like I like the boxer has a movie going on completely separate from everybody mm -hmm. else's whole. Fucking He's doing thing. his own thing. Yeah, for reasons. All right. Yeah. So. Um, this movie opens on a long uh, series of shots of uh, thriving parts of New York City. Um, and then those quickly turn to urban blight and then fade into the current shot of one apartment building that for reasons does not want to move, like the residents inside do not want to move, uh, even though the whole block has been purchased by this Lacey guy to build Lacey Plaza. Well, to be fair, they're also, this is one of those scenarios where they're basically giving them, you know, like five bucks and telling mm -hmm. them, you know, get the fuck out. But they're. It sounds so sexy. Who would want to live in Lacey Plaza? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also. I think it's more just they know 
they're not getting anything better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're like old. Like I know that one couple right. moves to New Jersey, like they're friends, but like you can I can kind of understand. Like I'm 30, and I don't want to move from my apartment, you know. But more than that, like this was a time uh, Urban podcast Renault. I've been listening to, been talking about all that stuff. Yeah, where the 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 you know, like in this movie where the guy comes in saying, you know, go live in Miami, and then they literally give you a hundred bucks, which is you know not even going to rent you a van to move all your shit. And until you you got to get out of there and bottom line, all your memories. Goonies, yeah. this is not like people being bought out of their house. Like you, you couldn't care less in the beginning. You're like, I don't really know these people, and then you see them, and you're like, I don't want to know these people. Um, we got this. Uh, we got this uh, old lady, uh, Jessica Tandy here. Uh, Faye is just walking around with two different shoes, walking into abandoned buildings. Yeah. Um. She's a mess. Yeah. Um, Apparently she just wanders off in a dementia haze. That's a pretty regular occurrence. So here's the thing. Does she actually have dementia or is she like weirdly just in this denial state? Yeah, I did. That's a good point. I read some about this and it's not super clear. Mm -hmm. It might be partially dementia. There's probably some kind of traumatic blocking yeah. or something Repression. going on. Yeah, repressed memories. I, I, I don't know my proper psychology terms here. Yeah. But... Like probably cancer from the, all the mm -hmm. robots flying around yeah, she, all the time. <laughs> she's not entirely, you know, in touch with reality. Giving yes. Those five Gs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, sadly, the truth is at this point, you are probably... Or at least I know I was thinking like, yeah, maybe she belongs in a home. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm not trying to tell you to get out of your house, but so this was the the first thing that really tuned me out. And now I'm not saying that like you can't have like a, a person who's losing their mind in your movie, but that's one with me when I see that. Like as somebody who can, you know, as a 40 year old, barely trust their mind now and is really terrified of what's going to happen to no, them in the cool. future. Great. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'm like. Oh, this is this is really rough. Well, it's like um, when you when you think about like Steven Spielberg, like '80s kids family movie yeah. robots. I don't want to like also, it, yeah. also deal with a woman yeah. going That's, through yeah. this. It's like two different movies. I don't want I don't want the dancing cheeseburger robot and the lady who's <laughs> yeah, right. coming to grips with uh, the death of her son, which she is in total denial about. Yeah, it is kind of a dude pick a lane, but yeah. But again, would have worked fine for a half hour hour long story oh, yeah. Yep. yeah and it might oh, not yeah. have been so bad if they didn't focus so heavily on her story as mm -hmm. opposed to everybody else in the building mm. um, she does unveil pretty early on that she could smell the days of the week yeah in the diner yeah. that's her that's a pretty power that's an interesting fat chat ability you just well, smell of food residue the sense of smell is like the strongest like mm. the strongest memory mm -hmm. sense that there is so, so that makes that makes sense yeah she can she can tell you what day of the week it is based on the smell of food. Every time I smell bacon, I remember that I'm alive. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we we have this this pregnant lady who shows up um, with the thing of groceries and has to run like like a fifteen dude gauntlet to get up the porch. <laughs> And they're they're all just like, hey, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to put my hand in your bag. I'm going to touch your belly. You're going to touch your belly. Yeah, yeah it's I'm so scuzzy. Gross. So at, the, at first, like you think these are like just sexual deviants that hang out at this mm -hmm. building. But yeah, they are the knock knock boys. I think is what they mm -hmm. call themselves. They so do. They're basically just the goon squad of this lacy dude. Who's mm -hmm. standing there to kind of just chase all these residents out of their building? And yeah, force yeah, their hands. He's to yeah, there to deliver the money to get them to get them out. And I guess they've been doing it to the whole neighborhood, but this like yeah. little group yeah, is all that's left. They're the, the holdouts, home. so they're super scummy. But, yeah, I said while watching it, it was like, "Are you telling me there's like 20 people that live in this building, and more than half of them are dirt bags that are trying to, mm -hmm. you know, basically molest this woman?" No, but, but apparently, so apparently thankfully they don't only, live there. There's only four people that live in this building, plus the superintendent, but. Yeah. Or five people. Like there's two characters that look like they're going to matter for like five minutes, and they're just like, nope, we're out. Right. <laughs> they're like, we're your friends. Let's hang. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. We have so many lines. Bye. We're heading to we're Jersey. <laughs> yeah, they, they matter in the sense that they're there to show that they're starting to lose ground mm -hmm. on this fight. It's so like, mm -hmm. Faye's losing it. Put her in a home or in the ground. Figure it out. Goodbye. <laughs> So yeah, they break into the superintendent's uh, apartment, and this dude is massive. Yeah, and like they come in, and like he's hiding behind like a shower curtain he set up as like a room divider 
uh, holding a jar of tiles. Yeah. And you're like, maybe this has significance for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, this is another one of those weird things. Some of the backstory or, you know, or some of the history on this movie that I found was quote-unquote backstory for a lot of these characters that mm-hmm. never comes up in the actual movie. But I guess the idea is he used to be a boxing champ, but got hit in the head a few too many mm-hmm. times and had some kind of brain damage. So now he's the uh, you know caretaker of this building, mm-hmm. but a little... Simple. Yeah, somehow off-ish and doesn't want to fight. But, like, that's really not super clear. I mean, it's like borderline some lady in the water shit going on. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, if you're... Just to protect her. But Mm -hmm. if you have some kind of, you know, brain damage, that might explain why you're acting more like a child and hiding behind a curtain, which clearly wasn't going to do anything. Mm Mm-hmm. But, it, it, yeah, this was one that upset me right off the bat, because not knowing that, I'm just like, dude, just stand in front of the door. Like, yeah. whether they get through it or not, like, we yeah. see later in the You're, movie, he's not getting through that guy. Yeah. You're <laughs> literally the size of all three of these movies. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, that you could have, like, on the wall, like, the mm. newspaper clipping of yeah. Yeah. His, how he got hurt or whatever. You don't need to do any of that. Just get a stern no. face and stand yeah. there. No, no, no you, but I mean just to tell us his backstory. Yeah. Oh, and oh you know, for that, yes. You know what we learn about his backstory later? Right in the middle of, like, a pivotal scene of, like, robot birth. Yeah. yeah. And, like, all this crazy, like, we're running around yelling things action time. This is when we're going to talk about, like, the basic traits of this character. Yeah. yeah. Per- perfect. It's, perfect it's, time it's to really, do that. It's really just, like, here's some dramatic lady losing her mm-hmm. mind stuff. Here's some cutesy, whimsical robot aliens. And then just every once in a while, someone will throw up a huge dialogue and backstory on whoever's in the building. And it's like... Wait, what the fuck just yeah. happened? <laughs> Can I just go back like, to the dancing cheeseburger? Yeah, we just it's just like, look over here, look over here, look over here, and then someone slaps you in the face with backstory. I'm like, yeah. what? I, I can't even handle this. All right, so they, like he's holding a jar of tiles because he's, he's been working on the tile on the floor. They hit that with a baseball bat. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, ow. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, you're freaking, but he's, he's fine, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, and they go and they like, um, you know, they smash through a door into this other apartment where you see there's a lady that was kicking the um the money they were sliding under the door back out, and uh, they like grab her leg and uh, they're just being creepy, dudes, yeah, basically. And then um, finally they go down to the diner and they're just like, "Hey, old man, I'm gonna break all your crap." Yep. He's and like, just, don't do it. And they're like, "We're gonna do it." He's like, "Don't right. do it." And then they do it. And here's the part where like. The characters that should give a crap that you should, the resources you should be able to use just don't. So, like, the cops are there, they're like, ah, a bunch of them will say that they didn't do it. So, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Be like, yo, like, four or five of us saw them do it. Like, (laughs) yeah, this is one of those scenarios where it's like, I only just took a shit. I'm gonna shit tomorrow, so why bother yeah. wiping my ass? Yeah. Like, no, like, you gotta do your job, man. Be like, yo, he, he wasn't wearing gloves, his fingerprints are sort he's still, he's holding the bat right. yeah, that he yeah. used to do it. Like, um. Like, I know this isn't gonna ultimately yeah. work out, but in the meantime, get him off the street so he doesn't, you know, attack us every day. Yeah. So, yeah, the cops are like, ah, this neighborhood sucks. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, they're, it's like, they, there's some line where like do your job patrol the neighborhood and you're like oh you mean this one apartment building <laughs> yeah <laughs> so now we have the the artist guy shows up uh mason um and i think literally, literally i think there were 15 minutes left in the movie before i figured out his name was mason <laughs> but um he shows up with someone from like a historical society to try to get this place done as a historical landmark mm. And if you've ever met anybody from a historical society, you could show them, like, the building could be three stones on the ground. Right. They'll be like, that needs to be preserved. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That is history right there. Something important may have happened here once. Yeah. Time. This woman looks at this. She's like, yeah, the building sucks. <laughs> like, gets back in the cab and leaves. Condemn this shit. You're like, what the hell is that? So, um, she's gone. So now he, he comes in and, um, as you call it, his, uh, his lady that's living with him is all... Like, she's leaving, she's storming off, like, you know, the thugs came, bothered her, put a hole in the door, he never painted her it, nude what? reasons, she's gotta go. Yeah. You know what, at the time, I was like, you're painting her to look stupid, 
But later on, I kind of, I kind of see where she's coming from because mm-hmm. he has more paintings of himself than he does of her. So he's more paintings pr- of himself nude. Yeah. So he's probably a selfish jerk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'll give it to her. I guess, but there's also none of that in this movie. Oh yeah, it's not expl- mm-hmm. it's like explored or anything. Like but. nobody's backstory mm-hmm. is explored outside of just like throwaway one-liners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, this is like your first seedling of whatever mm-hmm. he's got going on, which is he, maybe he's selfish. He's an artist. He's like an early hippie, and he doesn't want to move. So that's it. You know, he's got some paintings that maybe are important. Maybe we should be emotionally invested in. But it's like 10 minutes into the movie. Right. So he has the scene where he, like, destroys his studio and throws them all out the window. But you're like, okay, whatever. Yeah, cool, yeah. Do, you, do you, I guess. I guess he's mad about that. Yeah. Whatever. So, like, the um, the pregnant lady, um, Clarissa, Larissa, some sort of Issa, <laughs> watches as it rains paintings for a little while. And that'll be important later. Uh, as important as anything yeah, can be I mean, in this film. So whenever I say that going forward, it's actually not that important. I think the more important note at this point is she's already stalking him. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take it from there. So um, uh, we find out that the this film takes place in the uh, American Tale universe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we, Apparently, five will moved out from <laughs> the uh, yeah, upper we, floor. We learned that the Mouskowitz is used to live upstairs. <laughs> I can only assume it's because they moved west. I wonder Things if getting... that was like a legitimate Five Goes West reference or not. Mm. Or for that Five Old reference. I mean, maybe. Mm. This place is getting too scummy for us. We're heading out <laughs> west. <laughs> Mouse quits is out. So, um, Frank, you know, gives uh, he gives Faye some medicine, puts her down for the evening, um, and then just basically just, you know, has a emo- little emotional breakdown. He had a bad day. It's yeah, fair. His diner yeah, got that's... destroyed. Yeah. His friends have, have left. Yeah, um, not just his friends, but also his just general support because yeah. they were clearly uh, his, yeah. This other guy's wife was a big help yeah. in taking care of uh, his wife, and he's now alone in a condemned building with um, his wife, his crazy wife, uh, and he asks for help. Who also keeps talking about the son that he hates that is dead. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. um, yeah. <laughs> good life. So he's like, somebody help us. And, uh, yeah, that help appears in the form of a floating hubcap mm-hmm. with some lights on it. <laughs> Out of nowhere. It's like, ooh, look at that Jessica Tandy. I'm going to uh, go fly around there and get a better look <laughs> at... Euthanasia th- bot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he <laughs> explores the space on Jessica Tandy. He's like, I'm, I'm evaluating every curve. He does indeed. <laughs> yeah, at one point we thought, or at least I know I thought, that it was actually going in for an anal probe. Yeah, like, I'm like, I think he is in bed with her right now. <laughs> <laughs> you might qualify. Um, I, I like the design of the robots. Yeah. Um, the special effects are okay. Some shots look quite better than yeah, others. They're, yeah, they're good for the time is the best. But Yeah, uh, yeah a lot of the, the stop motion animation is, you know, like, that's clearly not where you are telling me it is. Yeah. <laughs> you at one point said while you're watching, it looks better than Wolverine's claws. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, again, mm. all the stop motion and stuff like that, I'll take that over bad CGI any day. Yeah, yeah but the shots where it's like the the hubcap robot is dangling from a line ha- flying around them look pretty good, though. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. As good as you can make that look. Oh, yeah. So the, you know, it brings in... um. This guy's like, all right, this place is cool. I'm gonna gonna bring my lady friend in here. Gonna plug her ass into the wall. <laughs> Butt plug. Just jack up your electric bill. <laughs> yep. And potentially burn the building down. But, yeah. Yeah, like that did not look safe. Like the outlet before the robot plugged into mm. it did not look safe. Yeah. Like it looked like it was burned down. It looked like they put out a fire earlier that day. I did like the the gravitas with which like the door on the back of the robot opened as if like some visitor was coming out and yes. for a split second i was like were there little aliens inside these yeah things? i had the same thought i was like, like no that's just an extension cord yeah, okay like, is this close encounters of the third <laughs> yeah. kind all of a sudden like oh right the cord okay yeah. no that lady's dick just came out <laughs> all right so um then they they fly about and they're like well this place this is where it's going to happen, but it sucks, so let's fix it. <laughs> they go around and just repair a bunch of crap. So, That's also, I started questioning it here, because, like, 
we see through we we skipped over a lot of it because it doesn't really matter that much. But there's been a lot of damage to the building and different. Mm-hmm. Every apartment has had some kind of damage, and then these things show up and they repair everything that was damaged in the previous mm-hmm. day. They don't repair anything else. No, nope. <laughs> they don't. They certainly don't clean jack no, shit. Well, yeah. <laughs> like, they don't. They don't make it new. They just put it back together. And it's like, I mean, in fairness to the robots, where do you begin with that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, well, I mean, <laughs> just get like a Clorox wipe or something. <laughs> it's arguably new enough because, like, the door that they repair looks better than all the other mm. doors. So maybe it's a bit cleaner. But they certainly don't clean the other part of the door that they didn't, mm-hmm. you know, repair. So. Or the banisters, or, you know, yeah. all those tiles the guy was working on before. Instead of like, hey, this is a good toaster. I'm going to go take it up to the pigeon coop. It's <laughs> where we live it. now. This, this, is my, uh, this is my mistress. It's yeah. Like, it's <laughs> like yeah. this, this building has probably ten different apartments you could pick from to hide in. You know, with various security features of different quality to choose from. But they're like, nah, fuck it, the pigeon coop, good enough. Well, yeah, when you're a flying creature, yeah. you want, you know, like a landing pad, easy escape to the air. I'm, there, are, there are holes in the walls of this building. Yeah, that's like, true. That's fair. Uh, so this roof. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a small step above the quality of the roof in the room. I was going only... a small step below the quality <laughs> of the roof. Well, I don't, I don't know if it could get worse than... It's... <laughs> like... I think it's bigger than the room. It might be bigger, yes. Yeah. But like that that super fake ass sun they had. Mm-hmm. Oh, this. oh, that like, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. No one look at the painting. Yes. <laughs> no one look at the sun that's not. Yeah, twenty five million dollars. You couldn't go to a roof. <laughs> yeah, like, could no one take a camera to the roof of New York somewhere? Yeah. No. Like, or oh, honey, anywhere, like, anywhere. honey, look out at the beautiful New York skyline. Like, it's just a model. You could have just gone outside on some scaffolding and put a little platform up. Nope. Uh, no, no. Um, so she's like, all right, the toaster's getting dragged into the pigeon coop. Clearly I, that's where I need to be. Sorry, just I mm. think I could settle this now, or at least in my mind I will. They win over the room because I just remembered this was most likely, I'm assuming anyway, uh, filmed in a sound stage in front of like a matte painting or something. Mm-hmm. The room they went outside to build a fake roof and then put up green screens to get the houses to the uh, exterior. That is true. So, yeah. All right. so <clears throat> the next morning we're watching Faye just kind of toss bowls around the room. Yeah. Well, because they, they were, she's trying to. I don't know. They reminded her of she the, saw them the UFO. Last, she I saw guess. them the night before. Yeah, she's, she's crazy. Um, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Whoa, the door's fixed. The diner's fixed. My Virgin Mary statues. Yeah, the vir- that's right. Carlos broke her Virgin Mary. They're like they restored my virginity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the baby uh, is gone. The baby's gone. The problem. It's actually a vibrator. Everybody. <laughs> oh, you know they make those. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, turns out Faye has been stealing a bunch of shit from everybody else's apartment. The batteries are not included. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I missed it before. We're going to miss it this time. That's oh, right. Yeah, exactly. They tried more than once to, to shoehorn the titular line in there. Oh, yeah, I guess All right, so... Well, Apparently, they think Faye has been stealing. Yeah. Once again, this dog has been uh, <laughs> accused of a crime. <laughs> She's got her, her deal with it, sunglasses on, <laughs> and is throwing bits of scrap metal in the pigeon coop. Yeah, to be fair, they, th- these other two people that live in this building, apparently don't even really know her. Uh, she's clearly got dementia or something going on, and she's staying on a roof, yeah, throwing nuts and bolts, trying to feed fake pigeon mm. things, as far as they know. So they, it just looks like she's a mad woman who's been stealing from their apartment. Yeah, so Frank, her husband, is like, all right, she's cracked. This is this is awful. The other two are just kind of like, a, nah, that shit was not that important. She could have it. Yeah. No, no, just take your stuff back and go downstairs, and if you hear someone screaming, just look oh, away. Please don't hit your wife in front of us. Yeah, so... The Mason, he goes into the pigeon coop and like gets like cartoon zapped out of there. So yeah, then, um, Faye's like, "Hey, check this out. Give me your watch. I'm just gonna smash the shit out of it." And you see these two little robot aliens come floating up, and they uh, they like jump around all over it real quick and fix it up. 
through questionable effects. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, so I guess they yeah. work on like leprechaun rules where if you give them a broken shoe, they have to repair it. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. it's all making sense now. Because I was just thinking they were just going to eat it. Just <laughs> but if you take one of their coins, watch out. They'll kill That's you it. even if oh, you're yeah. they'll launch you even I, in space. And actually, or now that food. you mention it, that would be hilarious if they just repaired the watch, but all the metal was left out of it, and I ate that. <laughs> so, um, there's like, a, like they go down to the diner, and the diner's fixed. It's, it looked better than it did before. Yeah. And they're like, holy crap, let's dance. And, um, you know, Jessica Tandy's character is like, guy and girl, I don't know, you should be dancing together, because I've decided yeah. you're a couple. You're married now. <laughs> Make love. They're just like, what the fuck else are we going to do? Jessica Tandy says, time for you to get a handy. Mm. <laughs> it's more like so, the script says by the end of this, you need to be a couple, so let's get moving. Yeah, they, that's that's the best chance we're going to get on this. There's, anything else would be shittier. Oh, but, oh, and around here, we get one of my favorite parts of this movie, mm. where Carlos seemingly blocks away. It's just like... What do my elf eyes see? Oh, he yeah. <laughs> running across. He like does. He like lifts his sunglasses yeah. up. Like, yeah. That's because um, he gets a call from like this other like bad guy goon that like Lacey's more like I guess his his main like Corporate evil guy. hand manager guy. Yeah. Um, and that guy calls up Carlos. He's like, Carlos, get the hell down here. Um, oh, is that what happened? Oh, okay. So yeah, Carlos comes running over with a, with a new baseball bat. <laughs> And sees all of his all of his hard work he did yesterday undone. I mean, he spent a while busting that diner up, worked up a good sweat. For what? It's good, good as new. He pitted Wait. out his yeah. silk white beater. I'm sorry. For what? If you said my job was to fuck up this diner, mm -hmm. and every day I came back and it was restored, that's a good point. You're like that's a very really good point. Amazing. You're like Prometheus yeah. or Sisyphus. You yeah, know, like some well, sort of... well, it'd be. I was going to do this shit for free. <laughs> it would be different if your boss was like, "What the fuck? Like, you, <laughs> this is supposed to be broken. It's oh, not broken." Eventually, this would become a problem, but yeah. like, I'd make this work. <laughs> yeah, that first time I would enjoy just smashing yeah. it again. Yeah, just take pictures. Smash oh, and then yeah. Take pictures and be like, "Look, I took pictures." Yeah. Mm. Also, I, I just want to hold in today's paper. <laughs> I want to throw this in there because uh, we skipped over it. But uh, at the beginning, um, the the league Frank is you know complaining because they tried to hand him the money after mm -hmm. they broke everything, and he's like he goes running out and chases after this limousine, and he's like, "You get out of here! You face me like a man!" And the dude rolls down the window, and he's like, "There's no one in there." And he's like, "Yeah, you thought he'd show up for it, which I guess is supposed to be like a baller move." <laughs> Drive his limo around there for yeah. no reason. Yeah. Well, he just came in an empty Iron Man suit. That's the thing. I, my thought was like, wait, so you're driving around a limo with no one there, yeah. and yet you're also still in the front seat? Like, what the fuck is happening? Because yeah. he wasn't even the driver. How much of a little bitch are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, like, what the hell is happening right now? <laughs> he is too scared to go into the back. But I called yeah. shotgun. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's... So now... We we fire up the straight up Looney Tunes music as like one of these robots is like we're in a bread box flying around and Carlos is like Whoa. you know and then like he uh, he gets tripped by one of them's rolling a uh, like a garbage can around and it steals his baseball bat and he's like oh that's my baseball bat I'm gonna go get that no alien robot's gonna fuck my baseball bat and he um fuck with it maybe yeah goes up to the uh, to the chicken coop. And, uh, yeah, he goes to grab his bat and somehow gets pulled into the chicken coop. And all the stock cartoon effects, like his clothes are a little shredded. He's got the black soot on him. His hair's sticking out. Um, you know, he he gets mildly assaulted by the robots and just runs for it, as as you should. I mean, Gently raped. Gently raped, yeah. Probed. <laughs> Gently probed. Yeah. No lube, though. They, it. Yeah, they reminded him that they could do it. Yeah. That is, again, this is the problem with the whole thing of the cartoon style effects of this violence from a dude that was basically trying to rape a woman earlier and from a film that deals with this old woman having My son's dead. Yeah, mental problems because her son died. <laughs> like the, the robots only did simulated penetration. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so this dude's freaking out about this ghost shed on top of the roof now. Yep. <laughs> it's a different movie, Ghost Shed. It's full of g g g ghosts So it's on Discovery Plus, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, they... 
the the two guys talk for a little bit about the robots on the roof, and then um, the the pregnant lady and Faye talk for a little bit about her son Bobby, um, who you know is is going to come back one you know one day. He just want, needs to get a car or one whatever. Day. Day. And you know her her husband has a terrible temper and chased him off, and Lars is like, oh shit, <laughs> I don't need to hear this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to have to testify to anything at mm. any point. <laughs> Is that why we can't let them take this building down? Is there something no. underneath? But then... Did he, did he not be stupid? Is that what's going on here? The lights are flickering and everyone's got to go to the roof for some hardcore robot sex. Hardcore. No simulated penetration yep. here. Yeah, this was one I definitely didn't get as a kid. Mm. No? No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know what sex was at that point. Like, I, I certainly well, I think, don't, but I get it. <laughs> I think I was more just like, how does this work? Like, uh, you've seen that plug. Like, I know, I know, a, you know, you know yeah, I know the, the yeah. male adapter's going in the female adapter. I get that, but like, what is. <laughs> What's we, the DNA situation on this robot? Well, Joe, we, we also kind of skipped over this before, mm. but we saw he's trying to make a hand yep. for a reason, mm -hmm. I assume. Yeah, for when she's not around. No, that that's oh. strictly for bitch slapping Mason. <laughs> it was very much a, a slapping hand. That's if one of the humans gets out of line, they get backhanded with it. So, yeah, um, you know, you have you have a sentient self-replicating machine here mm. yeah best way to to pass on its uh its traits sexual reproduction it. just porking Dang it. you know what yeah like, maybe they don't need to do that maybe that was just yeah fun yeah. i guess yeah <laughs> if we're gonna have kids we might as well enjoy this <laughs> yeah, do it up. but you know how that works joe what's that don't you worry about it that's how yeah it. that's it <laughs> this movie's like <laughs> Let's, let's tell ourselves that they need an excessive amount of energy to the point where the simple amount through the current of the light, uh, the, the Christmas lights would not do it, and the male uh, UFO thing needed to give her his essence. energy as well. His essence? In order to produce the little... Robots porking! <laughs> hey, did you hurt your back stretching that much? Yeah, I did actually. So you... So, did, they, did Spielberg hire you to try to Miami, yeah. go through this? Mm. <laughs> Listen, I've done a lot of writing about robot fornication. And I'm just and that makes sense. <laughs> Can I share some literature with you? Right. So now they're like, okay, well, S save it for the website. <laughs> she's preggers now. She's gonna get, need a steady supply of food. Let's run an extension cord. So my battery's not included. Only fans. Yep, <laughs> up to the. Uh... <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Deviant art. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, they run a, a extension cord up to the roof, and it's it's like the whimsical music time. Um, you know the like they're getting the Christmas lights out and everything. And this is the point where we're like, yeah, all right, let's talk about all the shit that's wrong with Harry mustache when no one's paying attention to any of that. Yeah, because this is also the point where they're like yeah. they're trying to get the extension cord up there, but it doesn't quite reach. Yeah. And then Harry shows up with some Christmas lights to make it reach, and they're just like, oh shit, I forgot you were in this. Yeah. Cool, let's talk about you for yeah. a while. Oh, this is the guy with the broken brain. <laughs> he's got a mean right hook, but I think he's a. Some kind of a tado yeah. now. Yeah, and you're watching this and you're like, can we just see the cute robots? Yep. Like, um, like it's been an hour, please. Yeah, yeah, why are we spending so much time with these couples I don't care about and watching flashes of light as robots pork in a shed? Like, this is not why I'm here. I like, so like Carlos is now talking to all his goons, you know, watching this from afar. And, you know, I don't know if none of the other goons watched what just happened, but they're they're like he's like there's some kind of ghost there or something. I don't know that it it did things to me in the chicken coop that I don't really want to talk about. Um, and they're getting organized. Something's wrong there, and all his goons are like, you know what? Fuck this. We're all out, all of us. That's right. Yeah. We're gonna take your picture. Yeah, you're gonna look dumb. Is this when he's looking at spine with the binoculars and Jessica Tandy's looking up at him with the mm -hmm. binoculars yeah. and she's like, hey, <laughs> hey, Bobby. And she flashes him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that. Come home to mommy. <laughs> so now um, you we. Want mommy milk? Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> so now we see um, Papa Bot is, uh, he's like, 
crafting parts from like soda cans. He's like fabricating different robot parts and shoving them on a Mama Bot's conveyor belt. Yeah. And it's going inside her. Um, and then, uh, you know, Mason's like, all right, we just saw some robots pork. I think I'm going to try my, my hand here with this uh, lady here. That's right. And he was going to try to go into her apartment. And she's like, no, can't do it. Um, and then you're like, wow, that was kind of abrupt. But she goes inside and you're like, oh, because she has all of his paintings all over the place and would look like a crazy person mm-hmm. if you saw her. Because no, she is a crazy, person. Well, a crazy person. Yeah, but she doesn't want to look like a crazy yeah. person. But it, it's also weird because, like, again, we're setting up the, like, oh, maybe she has a crush on him. But also, I think the first real conversation they have is about how she's got a musician boyfriend who's going to mm-hmm. come back for her. That's a little weird. And then they have, like, that scene where it, they have a perfect moment to show you sh- her going into yep. the apartment, seeing the paintings, being like, oh, wait, no, you can't go in there. But instead, we see it from uh, the reverse angle, so you just see her coming in the door and then freaking out and going back out. Yeah. So it is just like a, what the hell is happening? So... But yeah, she's just nuts and she's stalking this dude. It's weird. So now uh, we've seen robots pork, so it's only fair we see a robot give birth. Mm-hmm. Uh, while we're at it, Will, can you look at was the tagline for this movie, you will believe robots can pork? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, it's, it's true. It's a robot giving birth. Just it's like just, humans. it is. Robots shit themselves when they give birth. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. And so... Oh, also for this, though, we need more power. So they blow a circuit to which they can't fix. So the superintendent guy, uh, Harry, yep. uh, just throws a trowel in there and starts Sets a fire. Sets the fucker on fire. Oh, my God. There's fuses right next to those two fuses. Like, there's, I know. You can see they're in the cardboard tube. You're, you're like, what What even? And the, he's he looks so proud of himself. And they're like, oh, yeah, just burn the golden gun. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> That's why, to jump ahead for a moment here, but when uh, the Carlos comes back and sneaks in the basement to try and uh, mm-hmm. fuck with the place, I ex- have to expect him to just look around and see, like, half the things on fire, yeah. like, water leaking, and just be like, oh, I'll just get a couple days. I'll mm-hmm. yeah. it's it's gonna work itself out. Time. Yeah. Um, all right. So there's two two little babies are born. They're cute little robot babies. And then, um, after a little while, a third robot baby comes out, but unfortunately, it looks like it's not going to make it. You're like, fuck you, movie. Yeah. It's a beautiful moment. You got to shit on that, too. Also, well, this... The, the biggest shit on it is that Harry looks at it and says, battery's not included. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. I'm thinking oh, now, this God. does give you an idea of what you're dealing with with the movie, because it's like... Here's a cute, adorable little robot that's a stillborn that right. gives us the titular line. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, so it's like the mom and dad. Are, that's the movie. The mom and dad are right there. Like, yeah. so if you're ever gonna send anyone a sympathy card for a miscarriage, remember to write. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. batteries not included. I guess. <laughs> so now they have a little funeral for for the little guy. Yep. And um, you know, everyone is is just flabbergasted because Mason. Has the gall to suggest, hey, this fucking sentient replicating robot, super advanced thing. Maybe we should take a look at the dead one, just to take a little look inside. You this, know, this is kind of oh, this may, whole situation is so weird. Yeah, maybe he should have waited a little while to propose that idea. Well, also, but, probably don't say it in, in front, front, yeah, of, front of the parents. <laughs> yeah, but so or the parents. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is kind of like a. I have expected her, him to chase after her down the stairs and be like, "Listen, I, you know the live ones I ain't touching." But yeah, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Well, I can't hurt it. Yeah. So fucking this is when uh, Harry's like, "I'm the juggernaut, bitch!" and just grabs the the dead uh, rips it up from the dirt. Yeah, yeah, rips it from its tomb and just runs downstairs with it. And he like jukes <laughs> out the old man. Yeah, and again <laughs> he's. He's just like, I'll see you later, movie. I'm going to have another one over here. Yeah, he's like, I, I get, take it as he's just trying really hard not to break the old man's hip, like, mm-hmm. but just wants to get past him. So, yeah, he lock, he um, locks himself in his room with the dead baby robot. Um, and, yeah, we just cut to uh, the diner. Business is booming. Yeah. Um, suddenly everybody wants to eat here. Back in business. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Mm-hmm. 
Is hey, all, all those construction workers that want yeah. burgers. But that's the, the – I mean, I don't know what customers he's getting besides the construction workers, which we saw at the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie – he refused to serve. Yeah. So it's like, our, I guess he just was fucking himself over. He's like, oh, wait, cool. you know, maybe if I make money at my diner, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we might be able to do something here. Maybe the best thing isn't to throw rocks at them, yeah. but to get them to give me money till I don't have to move. I can mm-hmm. poison their tuna salad and kill them slowly. <laughs> right. And now, I didn't need a lot of the robots being cute, but just a few more scenes like this scene could have go- oh, made yeah. so much mileage mm-hmm. for this movie and made so much more of it forgivable. Cause it's, this scene is downright cute. Like, dad's like, ah, oh, shit. Well, I got her pregnant. You know, she had kids. I guess I got to get a job, you know. Right. <laughs> that, that rent ain't free. <laughs> that pigeon coop ain't going to pay for itself. <laughs> Robot college. <laughs> yeah. Although so, this is also where we ran into a bit of a potential health issue. Cause mm-hmm. he's flipping the burgers with his all purpose <laughs> limb. I, I don't know. Does, does he wash that? Is that serve safe? Yeah, I don't know. But like, he's, he's also putting it right on that hot ass griddle. Like, it's getting sanitized every time he's. I, I, oh, I as right, long as it's so, co- the burgers are cooked, I guess. Does you're fine. he's carrying I, a robot? I understand. He's an alien from space. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he has space <laughs> aids that can survive the high <laughs> temperatures. That's we don't that, know. That's where that COVID came from. So oh, I, God, I, I'm too loud. I understand. That staffing opportunities are limited here, and the entirety of your wait staff uh, is a lady who is not entirely in touch with reality. <laughs> no, um, and you know, your other member of your diner staff is a space robot. Well, it works because you don't have they, to tip her; you just tell it. You yeah, you, that's it. She won't remember. <laughs> it's like memento. It's like I left. I left your tip with Bobby. Yeah, um, he'll be back with it soon. No worries. Yeah, he's coming back. So then, um, he just starts this guy off on the grill, space robot. Do you even know what a hamburger is? You're going to find out. So, yeah, he makes the, um, you know, the buns in the middle, the two burgers are on the side. It's his first day, you know? He doesn't know. You can fix a watch, you can make a burger. Yeah. Also, at least as far as we can tell from what's provided from the movie, he didn't even tell him anything about it. He just yeah. showed them a picture of a burger and said that. That's enough. Because the mean... space robot saw that and he's like, oh, you should just fucking show me a picture. Oh, well, it did work. If any of our listeners work at like a fast food place or have worked at a fast mm-hmm. food place, I imagine the training is pretty much the same. So <laughs> I, this is what I, it should look like that. at the end. Please write yes. in to uh, the 4 podcast at gmail.com and let us know. I will give you that. Mm-hmm. Well, what do we think of um, two beef patties surrounding a bun reversing the formula of the sandwich? Can it work? I mean, whatever. I know KFC's done something similar. Yeah, it's all it's all the same, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. it seemed but like it's... the bun to the the bun to meat ratio is a bit off for me. Yeah, first of all, yeah. that patty was the saddest looking friggin' thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it was too too real like tiny, a ho- ones. like a ho- like a hockey puck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like both of those together wouldn't even fill that bun out. Correct. Yeah, um, if you even want to make this work, you'd have to put something between those buns. Yeah. I'm thinking that's the thing. Yeah, you gotta get that. You gotta get that figured out first. But uh, outside, maybe of a that, grilled cheese with the bun with the burgers I on mean, the other really side. You're just kind of talking about like an open faced burger at that yeah. point, and you just take the take the bottom bun and put it right. on top. That is the the other thing is like somebody returned it, I guess, as thinking it was a joke. I'm like, no, just fucking put the burger in the bun and eat it, you jackass. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> It's time to get serious. Mm-hmm. I know they're from a different planet. They don't really know much about human food. They Good came boy. to our world. They're subject to our laws. We have to take these robots to Fat Chat Court. What is your claim, Counselor? <laughs> so I'll acknowledge it's, it's their first day, first day at the diner. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a big day, a lot of pressure's on them. They don't need to eat. They don't know what food is. is. <laughs> they, they eat metal. Yeah. So, okay. But they didn't um, just show up and bang on our roof. So yeah. They owe us yeah. At least a little exactly. Yeah. Courtesy. They they wanted to work at the diner. As far as I could tell, they volunteered for this. Um, all right. So <laughs> I'm going to question that one, but yeah. we'll table that for now. All right. It's a different court. Um, <laughs> these are all minor offenses, but you know, like I said, they came to our planet. They're subject to our laws. Mm-hmm. All right. Scuba just like di- every scuba- immigrant. <laughs> scuba diving in the pea soup. <sighs> You little robot's plain submarine in there. Um, oh, yeah, I was good with that. That robot was just born. So here's. The I don't thing. know if the mom even cleaned it. up. I don't even know if it had any. Uh, infants do not belong virtues. in the kitchen. First. Of yeah. Life, period. Yep, that's period. a good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this 
So that's a foul. I feel like that was essentially like that poster you see with the baby in the mm-hmm. like spaghetti pot. With yeah. All, like someone fucked up here, but I can't really blame it on the baby. Yeah. Right. You well, put the top back on that pot and it, I think die. I think something else we you before you even talk about that, you have to say who orders fucking pea soup. Yeah, I mean, no one's ordering that anyway. That's a foul. That's a foul in of itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially like the diner in the middle of nowhere, in New York. Like, yeah, if you're getting stick to burgers. And grilled yeah, cheeses. I mean, it, it less nowhere in New York, literally a block from Times Square. But... Yeah, you know yeah. what? After a hot day of working construction, you know what really do it for me? A bowl of pea soup, yeah. thick ass bowl yeah. of soup. I feel like if you order that, you deserve whatever happens to you. Yeah. So, I, gonna... so I think that's a Agreed. mistrial. Yeah. yeah, no. So that yeah. that one, no, not guilty. <laughs> I mean, I'll also, I done. I will say in his favor, like you know, it's he can't fly yet. He got up there. Yeah. Like you know, you gotta you gotta watch your little baby robot. Right. Also, just to add, yeah. I will find him that's not a, that's guilty. A parenting foul. Yeah. 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 I will fi- not only find him not guilty, but I will also give him. Reparations for time served because he got his ass thrown into a sink. That is true. And against yeah. the wall, I think first, yeah. right? <laughs> All right. He was given. He was given minor corporal punishment. Yeah. Right. So, for, are there any other? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you know, walking on the grill, getting cheesed, intercepting cheese meant for a burger. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I can't say I wouldn't do the same. Masquerading. Yeah. You have the ability to not burn your little feet. <laughs> yeah. Again, more of this goes on. I'm assuming his own father didn't put the burger together and realize he just fed his son to someone. I'm assuming that was Frank's fuck up. Maybe he's just into it. Yeah. <laughs> cheese, cheese on my face, daddy. It'd be yeah. more like Aww. if the guy ordered like a shroom burger and you mm-hmm. saw that and you would be like, oh yeah, that looks totally what I ordered. But if you ordered a yeah. cheeseburger, you gotta know that's yeah, like, something weird. That dude looks like he knows he should know what his burger looks like. Yeah. Well, although at the same time, he also looks like the kind of guy that might just put stuff into his mouth without looking yeah. at it. <laughs> That guy, forget about him. Like, how did it? Frank and this thing's father were just like, "Yep, that's a burger." When even me <laughs> watching it was like, yeah. "That burger has eyes. This is not yeah. what's I'm, going on." I'm that's pretty, a robot wearing cheese. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Daddy Robot was like, "Oh, one less mouth to food." Yeah. <laughs> oh no, one's still born. Yeah. Oh no, did, one, did one, one to go. Yeah, the other one's drowning in the soup. <laughs> we're, we're good. By the end yeah. of the day, I'll be free. <laughs> if things. Cross my fingers if things work out when we try and teach him how to fly. This won't be a problem for my father. They, they cut out the scene of him giving Carlos uh, 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 Chris 20 to end his misery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just pop it out of slot that. like a vending machine. <laughs> yeah, in me now. <laughs> All right. so, oh, okay. So you got a, uh, you know, wasting, wasting cheese, impersonating a burger. He's he's okay to go on that one. He I think he made up for whatever crime that could be with a cute little burger dance. Yeah, yeah. Dance and hamburger. Pretty that's, adorable. That's very, yeah, that's yeah. cute. All right. Um did we have any other I think those were the two oh. major crimes in that scene. Well th- there were no major crimes. Well, so, matters that crimes. I'm gonna be honest, like, eh, yeah. bun and that cheese and look like it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a <laughs> it's, shitty burger. Yeah, it's, it's low end diner mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. No big loss. All right. Um I think really the the true criminals here. Are you know Frank for allowing these shenanigans to happen in his establishment? Agreed. Um, and then the robot dad, you know, like that's a ballsy move bringing your kids to work the first day. It's your first day on the job, you're like, you know, oh, I got no babysitter. Yeah. You yeah. you know you know where mom is. She's up in the coop. <laughs> it's not like she's hey, doing anything else. Here at work. Uh, I brought my two two toddlers. Is that cool? All right. Where to grill at? Yeah. <laughs> well. Because they were working off of old, you know, episodes of Bob's Burgers that he got from <laughs> space. Mm-hmm. No, but, but, again, that's, he's also learning from Frank, who's just like, yeah. oh, I'm now in charge for this weird alien life form mm-hmm. no one's heard of before. Let me put him out in front of the public serving food. All right, so, <laughs> I think, okay, the two... One of them almost enters the restaurant carrying a plate of buns. Like, yeah. <laughs> you almost so, blew the whole fucking deal. So. Robots... Um, as far as the robots in the preparation and cooking of food, I think they're all innocent. However, due to Frank's criminal lack of oversight in his employment of, uh, robots and, um, you know, the chicanery that, uh, results from that, I think it was fair that they burned his diner down. Yeah. I think yeah, that was yeah, a, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think justice was served. Equal trade. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, that adjourns <laughs> Fat Chat. You're going to hire illegal immigrants. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, so... Poor guys in the movie's going to burn your place. Too. Bottom line is, like, that scene we just talked about is, like, the only part of this movie where you're like, okay, I could get into this. I'm, like... Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, a few more of those... That's the only part of the movie anybody remembers. Would have been great. Yeah. All right, so... Um, what do we call it? Uh, Faye reveals at this point she named the two kids Flotsam and Jetsam. Frank's like, well, fudge off. I don't give a damn. <laughs> You know. All right. And she's like, like, oh, you chased Bobby away. And he's like, we're doing this now. We're just a j- dancing cheeseburger robot. Like, <laughs> pay attention to the tone of the movie. Dancing cheeseburger robot. <laughs> right into dead son. Blame me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot if it was here. I think it might have been a little bit later. But yeah, we do. We have one that is straight up like the harshest turn ever. Mm. Where we went from some kind of whimsical scene to like, you know, you're the reason Bobby's dead. Or well, I mean, she yeah. doesn't go that far because she doesn't remember. But so, um, Carlos comes by and is like, um, he's talking shit. But like, construction worker guy who just stole another construction worker's burger because his danced away. <laughs> um, is like, you want to take this outside? But then uh, Jessica Tandy's like, no, Bobby, you don't get to play with anyone until you eat this questionable pea soup. <laughs> no less than one robot in it. Um, I will give them. Um, I think that was tomato soup. Fair enough. All right, that she's, <laughs> she would even feed Bobby that questionable pea soup. Yes, that, that's actually just to deter vermin from coming into the diner. <laughs> So, Rats come in like, oh damn, I got pea soup. Yeah, <laughs> let's get out of here. Oh, yeah, fuck that. Is this all you serve? It's like a cartoon <laughs> scene. Dip. They're just like, <laughs> let's go to McDonald's down the street. <laughs> it keeps the rats away, but every once in a while we'll get a boggling in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, man, I need to start keeping pea soup now. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Carlos is like, he he humors Faye for a little while. Um, about, you know, listening to her tell him about Bobby, and she invites him to dinner, and he's like, well, maybe I'll take advantage of that later. Um, is weird. Like, is he trying to... I don't even know what he's trying to do at this yeah. point. I think he's just being human. <laughs> he's just like, you know, everybody's treating me like shit, but this old lady is still... She's out of her goddamn mind, but she's yeah. being nice to me until she sees she's in league with these devil creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now we cut back to Harry... Who's like soldering inside this dead space robot baby. Uh-huh. And he's just like, fuck it, I give up. Puts his foot up on the table that the thing's on the other end and just whimsically catapults it across the room yeah. into his sink. And so it goes down With the, the radio. Drain. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That was his suicide sink. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of course you keep your radio right above the sink. Suicide sink by James directed by James Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, clearly this is a safe situation. So now we got to follow this little guy through the plumbing as he makes his grand entrance into the world of the living by grappling hooking out of a toilet. Like we all do. Like we all do, yeah. Um, Come grappling like, right, and screaming into this world. That's how you chose to bring the little guy into the movie. The grappling hook was adorable. Yeah. Although I think the as, toilet, uh, not so much. Yeah, as Rob points out while watching this, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what would be great if just for like a few seconds it lingers on Harry's face as he's like amazed by, you know, this little guy's alive and relieved and everything. And just one of those big construction workers from the diner just bursts and he's like, yo, I gotta go! <laughs> <laughs> Harry's just like, no! <laughs> Creates an airtight seal with his ass cheeks. <laughs> Can't even hear the screaming anymore. <laughs> Oh, the robot's like, I'm still alive, but I no longer <laughs> wish I was. <laughs> I've seen some things. So, the horror. The so horror. Mason decides to make up to with uh, Larissa. He goes and he brings her a bunch of food because, you know, she ain't taking care of herself. Mm. She hasn't even been to the doctor yet you know, about this baby. It's not good. And he's like, I bought every conceivable kind of milk for you. I will also give her, like, don't be too harsh on her for that, because near as I can tell, besides uh, the, the couple here, Frank and Faye, who mm. have the diner, I don't think anyone else works. So I don't yeah. know how they're affording shit, let alone having, like, Fair insurance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to a doctor. Like, I can't even afford to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, 
he he just comes in. He's like, I bought every kind of milk in the world. Um, I bought jalapenos for some reason. I'm eating one. It's really hot. I'm just going to drink the milk I bought you right from the carton. Yeah, wow. um, it's back in the 80s where jalapenos were like the hottest, craziest yeah. thing you could oh eat. Oh, my God. Jalapeno. Well, that's also, I think, uh, you know. I'm just some dumb white guy. I've never had a jalapeno before. Are they hot? Oh, what's up, Those that you were all talking. About. <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever had a, a jalapeno popper down at the at, down at the Fridays. <laughs> and he, he and then he sees for like he finally realizes that every one of his paintings is on display in her apartment, and he's like, okay. You are crazy, <laughs> but I'm going to paint you. I'm going to back out slowly, mm. and we won't talk anymore. Yeah. So, Well, no, yeah, here they have some whole weird conversation where he's, you know, I think he, I think it's even him that immediately goes to the one that's a picture of him and is like, what do you think of this? And she says yep. some big speech about it, and it's like, this is creepy on so many levels. Like, mm-hmm. I think you look at your dick in the mirror. Every day for more than is necessary. Or okay. I think if you gave your girlfriend as much attention as you it's, give yourself, or even half as much, she might not have left. It, Mason's like, uh, uh, now a tiny robot looks at my dick for longer <laughs> than it's okay. That's right. Um, so now uh, we get a very quick scene where Carlos puts on his finest suit and goes to see Mr. Lacey. Uh, and really, the only time you see him in the movie, except for the end, and he's basically like, fuck you, Carlos. You can't get these people out of the building. And he's like, yo, I did, like, all the other things you've ever needed me to do. And yeah, just, I failed this once. I'm fired. And the guy's like, yeah, get out of here. He's like, all right, I'll destroy the building anyway. Because that's, that's... Why not? That's yeah. Because Carlos just really just wants a daddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same, but we see Mr. Lacey has um, hired his his own, like, a new goon. He he got, like, Clarence Bodiger over here to yeah. go burn the place down. Speaking of, the whole time I was, like, crossing my fingers and hoping for the executive gun or for Ed 209 to mm-hmm. show up. Something. When he went well, into that office building. I'm like, come on. So, now Mason is, uh, he's painting, uh, this, the, the lady, some sort of Issa. And it's weird. Yep. And it's, oh, it's creepy. It's so, real weird. Hey, did you want to be nude? Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> so he's he's paying her tits, and she's mm. not even she's not naked. So she's, he's just imagining her naked, mm. and it's great. That's it's how like, he uh, hits on girls. We and have, it's a kids movie. Yeah, like we've been neighbors for a while, but I've actually spoken to you three times, mm. and I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead and just imagine what your nipples look paint like. Paint yeah. titties on your pregnant body. So with burst one, out of this robe. One weird ass looking eye and whatever else nonsense mm. he's got. And this is cool. Well, one lady left me because I didn't paint her naked. Mm. So I'm going to make <laughs> sure Doubling now. Down. Yeah, I paint you naked immediately. Mm. That's how you know I love you. Whether you so, allow me to or not. So Larissa's is like, hold on. Five minutes of pointless dramatic tension showing up. Because my boyfriend's here in the whole mariachi band. They're outside. They're like, eh. Racial stereotypes. We got yeah. their instruments. Mariachi. <laughs> We're here to be offensive, and we'll never be seen yeah. again. <laughs> Bye, Mason's movie. Mason's like, fuck that. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Faster than Speedy Gonzalez. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. He just <laughs> uh, no. fucking runs out and like immediately gets pissed drunk. He's like, I'm gonna drink this entire bottle of wine. Whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna drink this entire bottle of wine. Two fingers at yeah. a time. He's got like a little. Mm. He's got like a little. And he's out on the streets, like it's not even in his apartment. Yeah, mm. he's just carrying around this little rocks glass of wine. He's like sipping on. So now we get probably my favorite scene of the movie is what an when artist. when Mombot is teaching Flotsam and Jetsam to fly, mm. and like you know pushes one of them off, and it goes it goes okay. Deploys some kind of different flying technique and realizes he can fly. But the other one's like, Mom, don't do it. I don't want to go. I, I'm not ready to fly yet. She's like, you're going over the edge. And he's like, don't do it, Mom. And then, like, he does, like, she pushes him. He does a little cartoony, like, float there for a few seconds. Stretch out two of his grabby arms and grab the side of the stairs. Mom's like, uh-uh. Gets the circular saw out. <laughs> I thought she was going to cut his hands yeah. off. I did, too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Just cuts the little bit, like, that he's holding on to away. I'm going to have to fix this later, too, you mm-hmm. little bastard. <laughs> and he goes tumbling down, and it's cute. He tries, like, a little umbrella thing. He's got he's trying little wingalings from his side. And he's like, oh, my butt's a thruster. Never mind. Butt thruster. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
It's a, well, it's a great day in every man's life. No, he still yeah. doesn't yeah. quite yeah. have it himself, but that's when the uh, oh, that's right, the yeah. other one shows yep. up and saves him, I guess. Because yeah. oh, yeah. well, uh, preemie yeah. babies are the strongest the, babies. The, the yeah. ghost baby shows up. You don't know what I went through in that toilet, flying what? <laughs> that's nothing. <laughs> So, <laughs> so what do you say? Preemie babies are the strongest. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the opposite in most cases. <laughs> that's why I'm laughing. I I'd also pretty, feel terrible about myself right pretty, now. <laughs> pretty bad. Pretty bad. Well, to be fair, he wasn't preemie. He was just dead. dead. <laughs> they all came at the same time. Stupid babies need the most attention. I wonder if he's like the robot equivalent of a zombie. Maybe that's why he's so Maybe. strong. Maybe. Well, that's Ooh. Zack Snyder. Mm-hmm. Indeed. <laughs> Alright, so the robot family's God, reunited. Yay. I can't believe Yay. I forgot that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Carlos is like, I can fuck this up. I'm going to break into the building with an axe and just start smashing everything. He was full Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I wrote in my notes Mason does a bird impression. (laughs) Because he does, and it's (laughs) crazy. Because when he sees the little babies learning to fly, he's like, once the birds learn to fly, they leave the nest. Oh, that's right. (laughs) And he goes, (laughs) 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 Have you ever seen a bird? (laughs) 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 I think that was a you straight cat you apartment? thought it was a bird. <laughs> yeah, did you grow up in Jurassic Park? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, so he's all bummed because he's like, yes, three mariachis showed up and are porking the girl I'm after. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, and he goes back up there and yeah, she's like... a salsa train on. Huh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she's like, yo, I saw the three dudes. I was like, nope. They can go to Chicago. I'm staying in this hellhole with you. And you're going to raise his child. Yep. <laughs> Weirdly, he was cool with this. <laughs> Here's a bird sound for you. <laughs> but the other so, guy, I guess, is getting cooked also. Mm. Well, no, I don't know. The other guy, he just got some big music promotion. He's going off to Chicago and Banger yeah, raise least, a kid. Banger yeah. at least once yeah. and gets to go. He's like, you don't want the child support? Yay! <laughs> like, yes. oh no, I'm I'm down a New York girlfriend. I still have the girlfriend in Chicago, the girlfriend in Ohio, the girlfriend in Kansas. Like, what? <laughs> have, have fun with Cyclops, I guess. <laughs> so... Um... Now, uh, Carlos, he's in the basement. He's just hitting pipes with an axe and smashing the electric meter with a metal axe. I don't, I don't know. Um, we determine apparently he thinks, uh, the, the method here is break things on the top floor. Yep. If that doesn't work, go to the main floor. If that doesn't work, go to the basement. Mm-hmm. Honestly, break things in everywhere until it works. He should just wait it a little bit longer until the power company shut them down for the fucking electric bill. Yeah. And then the robots turned on the people once they couldn't get power anymore. But he starts busting up the power meters, so he's going to be in trouble with yep. the power company. I, more than that, I mean, it's debatable how this is working, but from what I can see from these little robots, and as cute as they are, and mm. they're repairing things, eventually, like, all the pipes are going to be eaten. You're, yeah. you're not going to have any screws anywhere. Like, this building's just going to come down on its mm-hmm. own. Well, that's that's when um, once the power gets cut off, the robots sort of Matrix style hook the people up to like batteries. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the beginning of they the end. They kind of look a little bit like the the Sentinels in mm-hmm. the Matrix. Don't they? So they'll have them. Some similarities. They'll have a whole floor cleared out, and it'll just be one of those Conan style wheels that you just push over and over <laughs> to turn a uh, an alternator. <laughs> have right. the big uh, super guide down there, like. <laughs> Push. <laughs> yeah, because I was gonna say, yeah, I don't think Frank's gonna do much yeah, on that one. He dies immediately. Yeah, he's gonna die. Well, and that's that's the point where the robots just liquidate them and replace them with other people. Yeah. Although I could see, you know, just put Faye in like one of them hamster wheels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she could probably go all day. Yeah. yeah. You know, all right. a picture of Bobby in front of her. <laughs> so, Dad Bot's like, oh, that Carlos, he's in the basement doing something. I'm gonna go. Do some whimsical, light-hearted shit to him. <laughs> Carlos is like, I gotta murder you with a goddamn axe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, he just fucking axes this uh, this robot, and then um, go like jukes past everyone else. Harry's like standing at the top of the stairs, and Harry is the size of the stairs, like blocking yeah. the whole thing. 
Carlos is like, whatever, puts his hand on his face and throws Harry down the stairs. Yeah, could have killed him. I just, yeah. This is like, it was madness at this point. I'm like, how is that possible? Mm-hmm. He's running oh. through the door. He can't get out the the door. Like, I don't know how that one works. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's an exit door. Also, it, just to mention, though, because it was sort of important, is uh, that Harry had the three babies, which got scared. and Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, off, they off. freaked out. So, um, start to make sense. Mm-hmm. this is just like Iron Giant. When Harry got knocked down the stairs, it removed the dent from his head. Mm. You know what? It wouldn't surprise me if that was in the script and no. just no one <laughs> mentioned it enough. Or, you know, so Harry puts his gloves on and prepares for war. It's fight time. And just, <laughs> this is sad to watch because he's the dumbest thing. Carlos ever. is like a third of his mass. And just punches him until he runs out of punches. It's like in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, where you turn purple. And no, can... it's like in The Simpsons. Mm, yeah, yeah, Dreader Tatum. When Nelson is a, is trying to punch <laughs> Dreader Tatum, yeah. and he's just crying the whole time. Like, oh, see, I was like, thinking. Sorry. I think it was when uh, Homer becomes a boxer and he always wins because he just takes punches until like the guy tires himself out. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. But... So, but either way, this yeah. is what I was saying. Like, if you did this from the beginning of the movie, we would have had far less trouble with all this. Yeah. So they just toss Carlos out. And, you know, it's a fairly lighthearted scene. And you're like, you know, never mind the fact that Dad Bot just got axe murdered. Right. That yeah. part was pretty cool. But then Jessica Tandy's like, no, Bobby. Ah! <laughs> yeah, it, oh, yeah. This was the turn I was yeah. talking about where it's just like, yeah, we're just going to. We're going to have a, you know, the big guy got finally got his moment to stand up for himself. And then we're going to... on that. Yeah, we're going to uh, DJ Jesse Jeff him out the door. And yeah. then it's just suddenly like, oh, no, you scared Bobby away again. You hated our son. You're why he's going to leave. And, oh, and the God. dad's got an axe in the face. And it's like, what? what is that? I can't handle this. Pick a tone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting whiplash here. Come on. Um. Cheese, dancing cheeseburger robot. <laughs> so dancing cheeseburger robot. Her, oh, Harry's my son's like, dead. <laughs> I don't give a shit about anything happening here. I got to go get those those baby robots. Get, let me get my dog whistle. And um, she called, meanwhile, Mombot decides to be in this movie again and picks up Dead Dad and is like, you, "You're not getting away from me that easy. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm gonna put you back together. I own your you got soul." Three mouths to feed. Yeah. Shit. You put your little prong inside my my adapter, like, <laughs> I got your blueprints now, you're mine forever. <laughs> so, that's what it is, their DNA's blueprints. So, anyway, so... Data. Mm-hmm. So, like, the three baby robots are like, yeah, let's just go play around with this, you know, with this hubcap, pretend it's our dad, and, uh, you know, while the street sweeper's coming for us. Because we have no situational awareness yeah. whatsoever. It is profoundly sad when you think about it. <laughs> Dad's dead. That's him, right? Mm-hmm. And I will I mean, say... He might as well have just gone and stayed home and played with his actual dead body. I will say the one thing, this movie does have some stakes going because you have no idea when it's going to like shift into in tone and like mm-hmm. something crazy is mm-hmm. going to happen. I'm like, they very well might just die to that street sweeper. Because the movie doesn't know. Yeah, down either. and then like, and then two minutes later, the movie will like try to show you some happy cutesy thing to to make you forget it. But anyway, so Harry puts the dog whistle through a megaphone, which I don't think works, I'm and sure. yeah, broadcasts a signal from Times Square, which being 1987 is filled with porno right. theaters. All the all the hobos just come out yeah. like from the yeah, the corners. They're like, what's that noise? And freaking like said fat Spider Man. Yeah. And- Oh. <laughs> it's like a thriller video. <laughs> ah, I hear so, the call. Yeah, he gets the he he gets the kids there, and then mom and dad bot show up. But dad bot's pissed. He's like, "You motherfuckers! <laughs> Which one of you hit me with an axe? I'm gonna swoop at all of you." They're like, "Yo, a, you know, we let you stay in our chicken coop or pigeon coop. B, like, we employ you at the diner. Don't be getting pissed here." Well, Dad now has some brain damage, so yep, maybe that's he doesn't true. remember any yeah. of that shit. Yeah, know what's up. <laughs> so they fly off. They're like, fuck all of you. Fuck the human race. Fuck, yeah, yeah we're gone. To go. And you're like, okay, well, you know, you know that's not going to work. They'll they'll be back soon. Actually, mostly I was like, oh, this is the end of the movie, right? Yeah. Credits? 
I think at this so, this is when I showed up here and the three of you were finishing watching the movie. And Tony's like, Can we just stop now? Joe's here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. That's I pretty much how thought. we all felt. Yeah. So <laughs> meanwhile, this like arsonist guy shows up that's hired by Mr. Lacey to burn the building down. He gets out his milk jug full of who knows what. Yeah. Gets his condom balloon things on the roof. I don't know. Um, Carlos goes in and is like, you know, um, like, you, you want to get burn nuts? Well, yeah. Let's get nuts. Yeah. He's like, you want to do some arson? No problem. And the guy's like, yo, it has to look like an accident. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck this up. Carlos else. is like, no, I'm just going to hit all the gas lines. No problem. Um, then they get outside and they realize that uh, Faye is still inside. Um and he's like, yo, you said everyone was out of the building. This guy's like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't care. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do a head count. Fuck they yeah. knocking on the door. Yeah, like, hey, I'm going to burn the building now, and you should probably go outside. <laughs> when I said there was nobody left in the building, what I meant to say was, as far as I give a shit, there's yeah. nobody in the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Carlos is suddenly like, oh, shit, conscience. It's that time of the movie where, you know, my heart has to grow three sizes. <sighs> Gotta go save Faye. Um, never mind. He knows he was right there where the guy's building the bomb. He knows where it is. Right. Like, just go stop Surround that it. first. Just take it away. Yeah. Um, but no, no. So he's got to pretend to be Bobby, um, to get Jessica Tandy out of the house. And it's then where she's like, oh, wait, you're not Bobby. This is another one of those tonal shifts where I was like, God, this is fucking dark. Yeah. <laughs> I will also say, though, well, he, yeah, he was there when the guy set the stuff up and he probably could have done something about it. He did also rupture, like, five gas yeah. lines. It's not too much you can do in this yeah. scenario. Well, and he still, I think he very much cares about burning the building down. He's yeah. like, I just don't want her to die. Yeah. But, yeah, he goes up there. He's trying mm. to, He's you know, he's like, oh, right, you think I'm your kid or whatever, so I'm going to play into that. But he gets it all wrong right yeah. off the back. He's like, you know what? I'm going to mention the car and how much I love Dad, which is the yeah. wrong thing. And she's like... <laughs> You're not my Bobby. My son's dead. I'm just yeah. uh, so he's like, all right, I'm kidnapping you for your own good. <laughs> yeah. And the friggin' the bomb thing goes off, building burns down. Carlos saves her. She's got to go to the hospital. Movie's fucking sad. <laughs> um, it's still super dark at the hospital because like she wants to go home, doesn't really realize home's burned down. Uh, Harry's finally given up. He's like, fuck it, we'll move to the old folks' place in New Jersey. Where I can probably get her the care she oh, needs. Uh, Frank. Frank, yeah, Frank, that's right. Uh, Harry is just like, I'm just going to sit on the porch and die. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, yeah, so Mr. Lacey's goon comes by and is like, yo, bulldoze the building. Like, the guy's sitting on the porch. <laughs> and he's like, I don't give a fuck. And the construction workers who, by this point... Actually, at this point, I think they they pretty much were good people throughout the whole movie. Yeah, the like they were just they're, just like, they're just do yeah, yeah guys doing like, their job. Yo, he's got to move. When he moves, we'll knock the building down. Until then, fuck you. Huh. It's like, we are union. You can yeah. die. <laughs> um, also, I, I'm pretty sure anyone would agree that murder is not the way to get this job done. So, <laughs> so Carlos so shows up at the hospital, try to like. Um, Still pretend to be Bobby, I guess, or whatever. Like, try to help. I know I just burned your building down and all, but... Uh, yeah, I think he I was just there powers. to apologize. Yeah. But Frank is just like, look, it's Bobby. And yeah. she's like, oh, it's all crashing down now. <laughs> like, He's like, nope. I gotta go. Yeah. Um. So now, like, it go it you know, sun goes down, it's at night. Uh, Harry has a dog now because of the dog whistle megaphone thing. <laughs> and okay, is well, sitting on the porch. That's a dog from Bingo. Deciding whether or not he wants to eat that dog for star. dinner. Um, and then the uh, the robot family shows back up with an entire invasion force. <laughs> yeah, yep. Like, we've judged your race and found it wanting, and we're taking this bitch over. Fat chat pals, guys. Yeah, you threw cheese on my son. I'm going to build our new base of operations to take over your yeah, world, over the zoo. ruins of your old house. Really, guys? Which, funny enough, if he had walked back and forth underneath them shooting at him, yeah. it would have been Space Invaders. Yeah, indeed. They look very much like... But, um, no, that's what we would have liked to have happened. Of course, they fucking rebuild the building. Everything's right. fine. Um, you know, the cops come and get everyone who lives at the building, and they're just like, uh, oh, I don't know what happened, but, <laughs> you know, you're probably under arrest. I don't know. Um, so, now the lady from the Historical Society gives a fuck. 
it was like, oh, look at all these important architectural features. That weren't here three yeah. years ago and therefore are not historical. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now they're like the press is interviewing Mr. Lacey about like, you know, the building. They're like, this, we're pretty sure it just burned down. Like a lot of people saw this burn down. <laughs> This would be a major news and, event. Yeah, and he's like, ah, just shut up, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> like, My plans like, will go on. I'm firing everybody, just the building can stay, I don't give a damn. <laughs> we also like uh, Clamp here, whatever the fuck this guy's name yeah. is. It's just like, you know, you're fired to his underlings so everyone mm. can like cheer and have that yeah. moment where the bad guy's been vanquished. But I'm like... No, Clamp's the asshole. Like, he's yeah. the one behind all this. Get him yeah, out. This, <laughs> this intermediary goon's in, like, three scenes. Yeah. And, like, I mean, he sucks, but he's not, right. like, him, him fired, getting fired is not, like, doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and that's basically it. it. Like, it zooms out, um, and you see Lacey Plaza's, all these huge buildings now. Uh, and just one little tiny apartment building in the middle of it. Yeah, I mentioned it's literally the beginning of Up. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that one little house in between these all giant buildings. Mm -hmm. oh, Frank's just there all by himself. Mm -hmm. oh, and Harry, Harry does eat the dog. <laughs> and Frank inflates all the balloons, not realizing they're left over from the arsonist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all full of nitroglycerin. Battery's not included! <laughs> oh, the humanity! Ooh. Tony. Yes. I'm so the ghost of a baby robot. Oh, no. So, on RottenTomatoes.com, critics gave. Uh, well, Chris gave this a score of 60%, which, from everything I found out, is because, like, six people actually weighed in on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, that's just it's really low. Um, audience gave this a score of 64%. That's their thoughts and opinions. So uh, what about you and yours, Will? Yeah, I believe about uh, 30 minutes or 45 minutes in, I proclaimed, God damn, this is boring <laughs> to you all. Um, uh, yeah, I can really see this being a good 45-minute episode. Um, tighten it up a bit, focus on just maybe Faye and Frank. Maybe one other character. But for it to be stretched out into a 110, 100 and whatever minute movie was a bit much. Um, if you have some nostalgia for this movie, you've probably already seen it and already care about it. If not, um, I don't really, I don't think I would recommend it. I don't think it's worth uh, watching. There's a whole lot of better movies from the 80s and 90s that are about robots helping people in shitty situations. Um, yeah, that's all I got. All right, Rob. This movie's not reprehensible, but it sucks. <laughs> like, it's just, there's, nobody really has a redeeming story arc in this movie. Nobody's life is really improved, other than, like, they get the building back at the end, but, eh. Still five sad people. <laughs> yeah, like, nobody's in really a new learned, building. Nobody's really learned anything. Like, nothing, nothing's really changed outside of to just get a new, old, shitty building. And there have been some robots banging on their roof. Like, that's really it. And it took way too long to have all that not happen. Mm. Like, you didn't need any of the side characters. And nothing would have... T like, if if, if uh, the, the artist and the, the pregnant lady were not in this movie, nothing about this movie would have changed. Nope. Like, it would not have changed one bit. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend this it's like ugh. i remember this movie being fun and like light-hearted and feel good and i thought like like in my mind carlos turned into like a good guy at the end kind of he had a weird arc but yeah. like i thought he like stood up to the mm. to the people mm -hmm. and like joined their side like that's how i remembered it mm -hmm. so i may be conflating it with another movie but yeah yeah that's... yeah um i'm most in the same track I, I wouldn't really recommend this um I will argue that there is one big difference that would be made if you took all those other characters out. It wouldn't be in an hour and a half long in a feature-length movie, which it never should have been. So that's why they're there. We're just padding it out. It's a, again, a good Amazing Stories episode, but not really necessary to be a full-length movie. So yeah, the, the, the robots are cute and it's like an interesting like there's interesting enough elements there but it didn't need to be a whole movie so yeah it, i mean if you watch it you're fine but i wouldn't go looking for it joe i'm gonna disagree with you guys slightly um this movie does suck it is it is it's a it's a d 
Like I, I wouldn't oh, say yeah. it's an F. It sucks a D. Yeah, it sucks a D. But you know, it's not there. There's just not a lot of like good things going on in it. It's not. There's nothing egregiously bad. Yeah. Uh, other than the the jarring tone changes in the movie. Like dangling the thing you want in front of you and then taking it away for some like Jessica Tandy's crazy. <laughs> um, but I would say, like, I felt like this could have been an awesome movie, and I would put this in the same category as like The Last Starfighter of movies that, like, um, you know, we're taking these movies from the 80s that were amazing and you know, remaking them now and ruining them. <laughs> like, this is a movie I think that was close, that like the idea is there. Um, if you fucking tried, you know, at anything beyond a D effort, it could have been amazing. Like, I think a movie of like, you got cute little robots going around an apartment complex. You have people that you actually care about in that developing, you know, and having interesting relationships. You have a bad guy that's getting whimsically thwarted by said, you know, yeah. alien robots. It's called the Iron Giant. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yep, most movies with technology yeah. are the Iron Giant. Like, but I'm saying, class. like, you know, oh. I could see this working. I could see this being cute, uh, and being something that I would at least be like, "Hey, that little dance cheeseburger is adorable." Oh yeah, you know, that robot was born in a toilet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just, it just doesn't do it. Like, it's, it's. I feel it's a good synopsis. That they never developed past the synopsis. They they all just sort of showed up to make the movie and was like, did anyone actually think more about what we're going to do here? And they were like, no. Um, it, it also, it sort of felt like a movie that like they started filming and they didn't even have the script finished. They might not have. Um, well, yeah. It was probably like, it was probably a script for a 40 minute yeah. TV episode or something. Yeah. Like they didn't fully know how they were going to pad it out yet. So yeah, I, I think that this like, I'm not going to say that this shouldn't have been a movie. I think this could have been a good movie, but it's not. It's a D. And it sucks a D. Agreed. Tony, where do you think you're going? Tony's making his dash in my... Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it's his turn to roll, so... Uh... <clears throat> Let's just pad this episode out. <laughs> Everybody vamp for a while. Joe, what's... Uh... <laughs> Have you seen any good movies lately? Saw two robots, fuck. <laughs> that was just at home, right? Like, not... I mean, I see that here all the time. Well, the they're, both, they're both in your hands while it's happening. <laughs> not both Battle bots hands. have gotten weird. <laughs> Fair enough. They're not both in my hands. Okay. Well, you got old, uh, Jon Snow there? Yeah, playing a little Jon Snow. I don't know where that pig went. Sweet. It's just lost now. It's here somewhere. I like, I like that in a quarter of the time, you've done more damage than all of my nieces and nephews come up. That's, that's what I do. That's cool, man. Um, I watched uh, Fast Five yesterday. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, I'll watch some of the Fast and Furious movies before the new one comes out. And it's like, I don't think I can do any more. I have never had that thought once. <laughs> It was fine. The Rock was in it. Him like, and Vin Diesel fight. Like it's like a kaiju fight. Fourth Fast and Furious movie is like the first one I ever saw. Mm. I think I saw it was on a date or something. Like the that. one that's just called Fast and Furious? Maybe, yeah. You know what movie I watched on date night? Total Mistake? Hmm. The Lighthouse. Ooh. That's with Robert that, Pattinson? It's, yeah, it's, it's Edward from Twilight and William Dafoe trapped in a lighthouse going nuts together. Oh. Isn't there some like masturbation scenes? Yes, there is. There is a scene of Edward from Twilight holding a uh, mermaid scrim shandered from some bone while pounding it off, <laughs> uh, and that's not the weirdest scene in the film. Um, well, I think Willem yeah. Dafoe's in it. So yeah. Oh, and he's he's weird. amazing. The monologues, the the crazy faces. Oh, sure. Uh, it's a good movie, but it was one of those ones where, like, after we watched it. You know, we were just going to go to bed after a while. We were like, well, we can't do that now. Um, so what we had to like watch a bunch saw? of like videos on what ha what just happened. What did we just see? Okay. For what now? The Lighthouse. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it does, however, have a about a minute long scene of Robert Pattinson smashing a seagull against the side of a building okay. for a long time. All right. Like, severe puppet trauma. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, yeah, we're still 
we're just bullshit and yeah, on. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> All right, I think it's Tony. We're padding out the episode. Yeah, that's right. That's just, just like batteries not included. <laughs> yeah, just like batteries not included. This episode should have been a half hour shorter, but we're just gonna <laughs> fuck around till. Hey, they did it. Where we get to do it too. Mm-hmm. So, so that's uh, that's batteries not included. Mm-hmm. What's next? I guess Tony's got a roll. I believe it's Tony's <laughs> turn. Well, I think uh, it's usually your or Brian's part, I guess technically. But Brian ain't here. Brian's part. What do you mean? It's Brian off. don't know. Won't hurt him. Low roll last time. No, I, I usually say, Brian, what do we have next? And he says, we roll a d20 of fate. Uh, anyway. Brian saw that robots were going to copulate in this episode, and he was like, no. fuck you guys. And I, <laughs> there you go. I've seen enough Transformer movies. I don't yeah. need any more of this shit. So, the d20 of fate gets a 13. Oh, lucky lucky 13. 13. Lucky 13. Lucky 13. Great. Okay. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> We're jumping right from uh, this movie that we watched today. That's the name already. Batteries not included. To 1995's The Indian in the Cover. You want another movie oh, with tone yes. issues? Fuck yes. Can't wait. Can I? This wait. will definitely not be problematic in any way. Nope. Um, I will be wearing a full headdress for the episode. Oh man, I, got, I had the. I had Thank the you, v- Zach Morris. I had the VHS for this, and I, I'm going to save it, but there's a, a cool cool thing about the VHS. I mean, it's got to be legal by the time this episode mm-hmm. comes out. Maybe we'll pass the peace pipe around. That's right. We do at least get to enjoy a puppet hamster get kicked in a hamster ball down a flight of stairs. Okay, that's good to hear. Uh, I've read the book, and I've never seen the film. So. Mm. Oh, I forgot. To, <laughs> sorry. No, listen, I did forget. What are we recommending instead of Batteries Not Included? Oh. You know, let, let me ask you guys this. Uh... Besides the Iron Giant? Besides the Iron Giant. Out of this, uh, batteries not included or the super, which I put on exactly Ooh. like the same Ooh. level of film. Ooh. Like super non... I, I, I guess I would go with this because it's a little less racist. I don't think either movie had any scene that registered with me yeah, super, at all. Super insubstantial movies. Both like, of those movies just sort of bounced right off of me. <sighs> Yeah, I have to go with this. I think I'm going to go with the super, because at least we get that Joe Pesci throwing himself at, at the dude scene. I think that was Cousin Vinny. Yeah, that's my Cousin Vinny. Yeah, I don't know All what right. we were... Yeah, no. <laughs> and <laughs> you have to put in scenes from other movies. Dude, Whoops. go watch Goodfellas if that's what you're asking. Mm. Um, that's not what I'm asking. Though. But, yeah, I don't honestly know, because, like, I feel uh, the super definitely has more going on that kept my interest more, but... It was far more offensive on a lot of levels. You didn't see a, a baby robot from space. I, do, I definitely didn't see that. So yeah, I guess Did maybe this. I don't remember if we recommended the super or not. I remember that. I don't remember. Super had a dan didn't have a dancing cheeseburger. That's it. No, that's my argument. It, I think it did have a dancing Joe Pesci. We probably it landed, did. That happened. Yeah, we probably landed about the same. Where it's like it's fine. He played basketball at one point. Mm-hmm. I yeah, he did. <laughs> Yeah, he did. Great stuff. <laughs> so Iron Giant will recommend Iron Giant again. That's, that's, Wally. I mean, you could just go go learn, watch a YouTube video on how to make grits. That's that's my recommendation. <laughs> okay. uh, watch an episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. <laughs> that's right. Watch, mm-hmm. an episode, watch three episodes of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. You know, actually, yeah, I, I will land on my recommendation being for batteries not included because... Ultimately, I would just say, go look up the clip of the little robots flying around. <laughs> That's all you need. Mm-hmm. I can't think of a clip from the Super I would want to tell you to watch. Mm-hmm. Slowly becoming a Guy Fieri apologist. <laughs> he's a good guy. He's, yeah, what do you need to apologize for? He seems like a genuinely nice he just guy. goes yeah. places, likes to eat, likes yeah. food. Gives these small businesses free yeah, advertising. for charity. And, yeah. You know, I, I, I think he just it dresses like an asshole. That's I amazing. can't speak for Brian, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that the 4 a.m. podcast endorses Guy Fieri. We do. Guy Fieri, if you're listening to this, we endorse. Uh, I mean, if Tony had glasses, we could all kind of look If you want to come by for some fat chat. Like that's right. We would totally have. Yeah. He has glasses? He wears sunglasses. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're on the back of his head, but, you know. <laughs> They're still on him. <laughs> yeah, come on. They're on Never said he had to wear them properly. They're on his person. Yeah. Was he ever in the military? I don't think so. 
He was uh, the ar- he, his, he was the general of the Flavor Town Army. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I, I know he rules over Flavor Nation, yeah. but that's not the same thing. Well, I'm I'm picturing him getting like <laughs> combat dropped somewhere with like he's got like the spatulas in his hand or whatever. <laughs> Grenade full of donkey go. sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. That just sounds like you jerked up the mule. Gentlemen, we need this. I want to thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Oh, boy. Um, we want to give a special thanks to our patrons. You guys are awesome. If you're uh, curious about becoming a Patreon member and supporting all of this, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash 4 podcast. Uh, if you want to find our episode archive and all of our other stuff, as well as links to merchandise and more, you can go to Podbean dot com or it's actually for him podcast dot podbean dot com um, and of course you can email us at the for him podcast at gmail dot com I think that's it. hi everybody donkey sauce hi guys. <laughs> good night everybody I'll, can I just say, I, I had a thought. Sorry to take everyone's time up more. But, so they're talking about Fast and the Furious, mixing it with Jurassic Park, right? Okay. okay. Yeah, I heard Did that on the that? We Hate Movies. I heard about that. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's the thing that's been going around. But, so I'm thinking, next Fast and the Furious movie, they're like, you know, we need to get some help. So they have Ludacris, and he's on a dirt bike, and it's like, oh, here's our new guy, and it's, it's Owen Grady, and he's got the Raptors with him <laughs> on his dirt bike. Mm. And like, we need you to join the team. And now, because in this new one, Ben's brother is John Cena. He goes, I know how to get back at them now one step further. So he gets his secret twin brother, <laughs> who's fucking whoever guy from Bumblebee. And now we got Transformers in this shit. And that easily oh. rolls into G.I. Joe. <laughs> and we just shovel all the crap in Yeah. There. So, and we just make one big dumpster fire and be done with it. Can Can John Cena be riding a dinosaur? Oh God! Yeah, by the end, they're all riding. He's with, turn, he turns into a dinosaur, which yeah. is like a canister of nos up its ass. He's like, a sexual tyrannosaur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the end of it, all the dinosaurs are half robot and kind of like dino riders, and driving their own cars made on their scale. Yes, and I drinking mean, a Corona with up their ass, yes. so they yeah. can go faster. Honestly, and drinking Coronas after what we just read about Rise of the it Beast, might happen. That's pretty much Rise of the Beast is such a bad title. It's, such, it's so terrible. Like it's such a bad call. Man. Yeah. It's because part of the reason I didn't read more about it is I, the first time I came across it, I just breezed past it thinking that was the Netflix series that's coming out, and then I remembered it wasn't. It's like, oh, we finally made a critically like enjoyed Transformers film. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, screw it. Yeah. Let's go back. <laughs> Back to the pile. Let's bring the spring bay <laughs> back. Yeah, Took our germs. Oh, and uh, yeah, kind of on the same subject, or at least I'm going to try and connect them all. But um, the uh, they were talking about because the new Indiana Jones movie has been delayed. Harrison Ford hurt himself. To which Getting out I of say, his van. <laughs> yeah. To which I say, like, dude, someone's sending you a sign. Take the hint. Mm. You tried to do Star Wars. You got hurt. You tried to do Indiana Jones. You got hurt. Cut it the fuck out. But they were talking about, like, can he re- be replaced and who would replace him? And on the radio station I was I listening to, it, on, on the station I was listening to, the uh, the head guy from Radio 104 is like, yeah, it's Harrison Ford. He can't be replaced. He is Anna Jones. And his co-host, Amy Gray, was like, here's a hot guy. Here's another hot guy. And it's like naming things like Jason Momoa. And I'm like, yeah. 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 And I'm like, Jason yeah. That's Momoa. exactly it's, Indiana yeah. Jones. Yeah. But yeah, but that's yeah. in my head. I'm like, this is exactly like the studio meetings they're having right mm-hmm. now where somebody's like, no, it's Harrison Ford or no one. And some, you know, marketing execs like, who would look good with their shirt off? 
Mm. And a fedora. <laughs> there was one guy who has to wait outside because he's like, why don't we just try to make like a new franchise? Get the fuck out! Yeah, like, you wait in the yeah. hall until we're done. <laughs> Just throwing out the window. Yeah. Everybody paddle him as he's walking to the door. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to go through the spanking machine on the way out. No, yeah, he's literally, like, let out the front door naked and somebody's yeah. going, shame, shame. <laughs> I mean, right. but when we try to do new IPs, we just get the Tomorrow War. Anyway, um, yeah, let's start this. It's coming out it, soon. It was forgettable. It hasn't even come out yet, and it's, uh, it's forgettable. Sure. Perfect.